as you guys know, not too long ago, we reacted to an interview uh, on a popular sort of radio show known as The Breakfast Club. I've actually been listening to The Breakfast Club for uh, quite some time. I really like when they have like uh, hip hop artists on to do interviews and stuff like that. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm a big fan of rap and hip hop. Uh, so uh, I love listening to their show and listening to when they interview uh, artists that I enjoy. In fact, one of the soundboard sound bits uh, that I use uh, on my stream, this one right here put some respect on my name was a very infamous moment on their show uh where they had birdman on and uh he it was probably the the shortest interview in history basically he came in in a really bad mood and was telling them that they shouldn't talk shit about him put some respect on my name and then he left and it was like a two minute long interview. It was like the funniest thing ever. Uh, but anyway, kind of getting sidetracked here. I love the breakfast club. And so when I found out, uh, that Olay formerly of, uh, the leftist mafia, I don't think she's a part of the team there anymore, or she's a part of the, like a co-host on the show anymore, a regular co-host. Um, but, uh, that's where I know her from. She was on there and she was, uh, basically grilling, uh, the New York city mayor, uh, Eric Adams and, uh, holy shit. She absolutely destroyed him. Oh, shit. Oh, like it was shit. insane to see how much she destroyed him and like ripped him a new one. Uh, now obviously when you're doing an interview and you're, uh, you know, citing, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, sources and making claims and stuff, you can't always bring up your sources like on the spot to kind of prove, uh, what you're saying. Right. And so she decided to do a follow-up video uh, to this situation where she actually provides receipts for the statements she made uh, during the interview. And I thought we would take a look at that. So here's the video right here, fact checking my Eric Adams interview. And so we're going to dive into this and we're going to see all the receipts that back up the statements that she made uh, during uh, the interview. She is bringing the receipts to back up her claims. Uh, and we love to see that for sure. So without further ado, pa, 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 pa. play that shit. Here we go. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything. Hey, everybody. If you're watching this video, it means you've probably- Okay, I love that intro. That intro was fucking hilarious. <laughs> okay, here we go. You've probably already seen my interview with New York City Mayor Eric Adams on The Breakfast Club, but I wanted to make this video so that I could present you with the receipts for all of the facts that I tried to present him with in that interview. So this is an unscheduled video interrupting my scheduled programming, but I promise you to the returning members of- Like I said, we love us a queen who brings them receipts. So let's get some 07s in the chat uh, for them receipts, chat. Hey, Lurinati, you will still be getting Olay and Friends on Sunday. You should subscribe to Lolo and Olay, where Lolo and I will be dropping new videos of our podcast every Saturday. And you should join the channel. We have our own special emotes, exclusive videos, early access to videos, live premieres, all that. It's going to be a good time. I didn't want to risk having NYPD out here calling the facts misinformation. Now, could we? So here you go. But if you're new- Haynes were set for a moment, I got Eric Adams and Eric Andre mixed up and thought it was going to be a very different interview. Oh yes, yeah, that would that's quite the mix up to have there, not going to lie. New to the Illuminati and you didn't know me before that Breakfast Club interview. Hi, my name is Olayami Olurin. You heard that? Olayami. I'm going to hey, say that again for y'all. Ola Thank you. Michael underscore T73 joined the Kuma Nation. Thank you. Yeah, I always- <laughs> I've seen like her full name before and I was like, I'm going to butcher the hell out of that. I'm really terrible at saying names. So I've seen like on the leftist mafia, she often gets like called Olay, like for short. So that's usually why I refer to her that. So, uh, oh, by the way, chat, I do have to share with you guys. Olay actually reached out to me. Apparently she loved our reaction to the interview. Uh, and she said hello to you all. So shout out to Olay. I forgot to mention that she did reach out and say that she appreciated our reaction and she wanted me to tell you guys hi. Lie me, but you can call me Olay. I am okay, so we can call her Olay. Okay, good, good. Movement lawyer, a former public. I don't want to butcher your name, so Olay is much easier. Ender, a political commentator, a writer, a creator, and what I like to call a professional loudmouth. If you already know me, <laughs> you know that I am. 
be Eric Adams hater. If you've watched my magnum opus right here, you know that I am a hater with lots and lots of reasons. I'm a hater with lots and lots of reasons. But if I'll say this, like ever since I watched that interview, a ton of her stuff has showed up in my recommended in relation to Eric Adams. Like I saw like some of her YouTube shorts on him and stuff. I haven't watched them yet, uh, but I have had a slew of her content on Eric Adams show up in my recommended. If you knew that, you were probably so confused when you saw me on The Breakfast Club wondering how did that happen? And listen, let me tell you, I can't quite believe it my damn self. I'm not gonna hold you. I, I can respect a hater. I too am a massive hater of various things. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being a hater as long as there's like a valid reason to be a hater, right? I find that a lot of times on the internet, sometimes people will like be a massive hater for someone and overly obsessed uh, with someone over like the dumbest fucking shit. And it's just like, at that point, you're just fucking unhinged. But when you have like a reason, like this guy is, you know, the mayor of a massive city and he does a shit job at being a mayor, I'd say that's a valid reason for being a hater of someone. You know what I mean? I was like, nah, ain't no way, no way. Literally up until the moment he came in the room, I was still pretty sure that was not gonna happen because I was trying to picture a world where Eric Adams and I even were in the same room, let alone speaking for 40 minutes. And you know what? I just could not see that shit. I could not see it. <laughs> Yet it happened. So I just wanna take some quick time to give you the receipts for some of the main facts that I tried to present to him in the video and try to debunk some of his lies along the way. But I'm not gonna keep you all too long because it's three in the morning. Eric Adams and- Yeah, like I said, uh, she, you know, obviously she made a lot of claims against Eric Adams during that interview. And when you're sitting in a room, like th this is a radio show, right? You're sitting in a room, you don't exactly have like, you know, a computer in front of you that you can, it's not like if you're doing like a stream debate with someone and you can instantly like Google some receipts to back up what you're saying and say, well, here you go. This is what I have to back up my claims. You're kind of on the spot, y you know, you make your claim and then you hope that the people who are listening will look into it later. Uh, so it's very much appreciated that she would put out a video of this, like say, Hey, you know, here's all the claims that I made during my interview with Eric Adams. Now here's the receipts to back up what I'm saying. So it's definitely going to be really interesting to check this out. Acknowledge that New York city is one of the safest big cities in the country with a safe subway station, yet people don't feel safe. And I said that New York city is safe and people don't feel safe. And that has a lot to do with how the mayor himself fear mongers about crime, especially crime in the subways. And he told me to provide him with a quote of how he fear mongers about crime. But lucky for me, let me just show you how he did exactly that oh boy. in this exact interview. National Guard, that there's a- Oh yeah, that's right. That's the funniest thing is he would deny that he like fear mongers about crime. And he, in the exact same interview, literally did exactly that. Like multiple times throughout the interview, he would deny something she said and he would prove her fucking point right in the fucking interview. Visibility of police, that they're trying to stop people with certain uh, records from even using them, and now you have this congestion price. So how do you reconcile that? Well, let's let's go before, uh, first of all, I would love to give me, give me the quotes on my rhetoric, because I'm, I'm lost on that. Can you give me the quotes? Oh, that you fair monger yeah, about yeah, the subways? Yeah, give me oh, the... you've consistently done that since the day one of your administration. One of the first things you did was add a thousand officers to the subway because you claimed that the subways are unrideable. You and Hochul did this and said how dangerous it is, and you recently did that when you deployed the National Guard. Sister, but that's not, that wasn't my question, Queen. My question was, what was my fear <laughs> What did I say? You gotta like, love that, like, slick attempt at like a deflection like that was your question she literally answered your question it's like but that wasn't my question it's like how was it not your question dude that's exactly what you asked for if you people on the far left disagree with me you know many people on the far left they said eric people should be allowed to sleep on the streets um no matter what they should be allowed to sit on your stoop and inject themselves with drugs they should be allowed to go in stores and steal whatever they want they shouldn't have to pay on the subway system they should be allowed to carry a gun and be able to come out the next day like people disagree with me all the time earlier you that asked me to point out opinion. the rhetoric you, <laughs> earlier you asked me to point out specifically what you say to fair monger about crime so i just would like to say exhibit a like what you literally uh, just did you can bro <laughs> He's already coping and seething. You know what? We're only, uh, what, like a, a few minutes into this video. So I hate to use this this soon, but I mean, facts are facts. Funny. Ha ha. It's true. You are coping, coping it's a literal cope and a seed. Like it doesn't get much more cope and seed than that. Yes, like you're saying that you don't do something 
And in the same interview where you say you don't do it, you do it. Like, come on. Yeah, that's coping. Absolutely. Fucking hell. Coping so hard. like a little bitch right now. Continue to say in this that New York is the safest big city while simultaneously you are the one sensationalizing the crime. I point out facts. Which is a fact. Is it safe or is it too? Eric Adams said that New Yorkers feel safer when they see a high visible presence of police officers around. They said, Eric, we see more visible uniform officers in our subway system. We're going to feel safer. We got it. We got it. Oh, let me. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I peel it back? You can it talk. Back? You okay. can peel it back. We, 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 so we got it. That so, I mean, I can't speak for everyone. Maybe there are some people who feel safe when they see a lot of police around. Uh, but as somebody who's grown up in some rough neighborhoods, like, I can tell you, me personally, Personally, if I see a lot of police around, I feel very, very uncomfortable. Like, you don't even have to be somebody who's committing a crime or doing anything wrong. But when you see a bunch of, like, cops just hanging out, like, that doesn't make you feel safe. I I I'm sorry. It, it just, do just doesn't. Which groups feel safer when seeing more police? Yeah, I exactly. It's just like, what the fuck is that logic? That's so counterproductive to what he claims he's trying to accomplish, right? The numbers are down. We got it that we're back on the subway. It makes me feel uncomfortable and anxious, if anything. Okay, let's put it this way, right? You could be the best fucking driver in the world, okay? You've never gotten a ticket. You never got caught for speeding. You've never gotten in an accident. Nothing, okay? Best fucking driver in the world. But one in the chat, if you agree with this, if you're driving along, minding your own business, and you see a cop car show up, you instantly get a, at least a little bit anxious about like, oh, you know, I got to be on my best behavior in front of this cop. I got to make sure I'm, you know, going the speed limit. If I'm turning, I got to use my blinker. And like, you're like extra, extra, extra on your best behavior because the last thing you want is for that cop to hit on their fucking lights and then you end up with a ticket. It looks like most people in the chat agree with me on this fact. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, but like extra police presence around doesn't make you feel safer. In fact, even if I were to give you the benefit of the doubt that, okay, maybe some people do feel safe around police. If you see a large police presence, that's not going to make you feel safer because then you're going to question yourself and you say, oh, wait a minute, what kind of environment am I in that they feel the need to have this many police present in order to protect this environment? You know what I mean? So even if you are someone who has a strong trust in law enforcement, okay, and you if you feel safe around, you know, one or two cops being present, when you see that many police around, you're going to start to question, why do they need to have that many police around? You know what I mean? So even in that circumstance, I, I, I don't think if the goal is to make people feel safe, I don't, I, I don't think that's the way to do it. Where I live, uh, we don't have a police department. So if we see police, it probably means uh, then they're there for something specific. Uh, you don't have your own police department? That's crazy. You must live in like a really small town or something. I've never heard of that. That's crazy. Anyway. We system um, post COVID. But when we see, this is what the public is. It's a small village. Oh, okay. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. But yeah, I've never heard of that, like a town or something not having their own police department. That's crazy. Damn. When we see the visible presence of a uniform officer, we feel safer. Fact check. A Siena study found that only 33% of New Yorkers feel safer when they see police. And only 30 See, this is what I'm talking about. There's a large percentage of people that do not feel safe around cops. Okay. Like I said, maybe there's a very small amount of people who do, but the majority of people do not feel safe around cops. And I think there's valid reason to not feel safe around cops. But anyway, 15% of black New Yorkers found that they feel safer when they see police and 61% of black New Yorkers would support some reduction of police funds. Three, I said that since Eric Adams became mayor, we've seen the return of stop and frisk and that Eric Adams revived neighborhood safety teams that have been disbanded after 2020 for their disproportionate abuse of black and brown people. The federal oh monitor who is tasked with ensuring that NYPD is following the law conducted or under, conducted under an analysis, who? conducted an analysis that happened eight years ago, but they're still here monitoring <laughs> okay. what you're doing. And they said that you have brought back. In small villages, you have to fill out a paper and police uh, get contacted. It's ridiculous. Uh, Jeez, that's insane. I didn't know that. See, because I've always like, I basically lived my whole life in uh, not a, 
massive city, but a pretty decent sized city. So I've never experienced what it's like to live in a small village. That's pretty crazy. Stop and frisk policies that are worse than they saw even during the Bloomberg era. But more importantly, they so analyzed the neighborhood safety. Out, show me that, so I could show you the, show, the report is said, available, and I know it's been available to uh, you because your spokesperson has commented yeah, on it. They did an analysis of over yeah, 10 you precincts. Can't, you can't keep putting 10 out stuff different that's not precincts. Factual, that is factual. There's a federal monitor. Bro, he's over here like you can keep putting it out. She's got the receipts. I mean, obviously, like this is, you know, the conversation they're having right here is before this video came out, but like. She's got the receipts to back up her claims. What the fuck? They're reporting to Judge T. Swain on it and presenting and said what? the information. That be, since, since they said that, yes. Listen, since, let me finish that, so you can peel it back. They conducted an analysis of- Funny haha -ha says he's stuttering shit. Yeah, because she's got him basically as like a shivering bitch. He's scared because he knows that she ain't playing. He's over here like, well, you got you gotta you gotta present like the the the, the facts, the facts t -t 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 today, Julia! Ten different precincts, mm -hmm. and of ever of the stops of ten different precincts, they found that ninety-seven percent of them. By the way, of the neighborhood safety teams that were disbanded in twenty twenty because of their disproportionate abuse against Black and Hispanic people that you revived, they analyzed ten of those different neighborhood safety teams and found that they're conducting ninety-seven percent of their stops on Black and Brown people, and a quarter of them are unconstitutional. That's what the federal monitor said, not me. Yeah, yeah. And that's Home girl, don't play. Oh shit! Oh shit! We love to see it, don't we, chat? We love to see it. Fact check. Straight from the New York Times, quoting the Federal Monitor's report. You maybe want to vape now? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not vaping nicotine. It's uh, it's CBD. It helps with anxiety a little bit. But uh, yeah, my apologies. D d if you're a nicotine enjoyer, uh, do your best to break that habit because I've heard it's a very, very bad habit to break. I've never, you know, been a consumer of nicotine either through cigarettes or vaping. Uh, so I can't relate. Uh, but yeah, try to break that habit. It's, it's, it's no bueno. I have, uh, no more peach flavor. That's why. Oh, oh, well, that sucks. Hopefully you could get some soon. Port. The New York police department's anti-crime units are still stopping, frisking and searching too many people unlawfully almost all of them people of color. Despite assurances from Mayor Eric Adams that new policies and training would end the practice, according to a new report by a court-appointed monitor. The monitor, Mylon Dennerstein, filed a report in federal court in Manhattan on Monday detailing what she described as unlawful policing. Ms. Dennerstein, whose position was created in 2013 after a court ruled the police department's use of stop and frisk was unconstitutional, is assigned to oversee the units, which have a history of targeting black and Hispanic people. Earlier versions of the units were responsible for a disproportionate number of police shootings. Yeah, it reminds me of a lot of the stuff that we experience here, like on the West Coast, where like basically anybody who's like, you know, Latino or black will just be randomly stopped for like the most like random fucking shit. Like they don't even have to have like an actual valid reason to stop someone. They'll just stop them just to like fuck with them sometimes. Like I've witnessed some of this stuff like firsthand, maybe not me, because even though like I'm Mexican, I come off as pretty like white passing. Uh, so I don't experience a lot of this stuff personally that's not to say i haven't had bad experiences with law enforcement i have uh but uh like i've definitely been like riding along with like one of my cousins or like you know a friend or something like that who's a little bit darker in complexion and like have a cop pull us over for absolutely no reason whatsoever they weren't speeding uh we had our seatbelts on like nothing wrong was done and they literally just pulled us over to like hassle us and shit like that so like yeah this is like the whole stop and frisk thing it's it's never made sense to me how that is even remotely considered okay you you i suspect that you might be committing a crime never mind the fact that i don't have any proof of it or whatever but i'm gonna stop and search you just because i i, I have a hunch like that seems really insane to me and they were disbanded in 2020 mr adams reinstated and renamed them after he took office last year but critics were skeptical that they could be run without racially profiling young men of color as previous units had. Almost all of the stops- Damn, sorry that happened to you, Tippy. I mean, it's nothing like super serious. There's definitely been people that I know that have experienced worse for sure. Uh, but like, uh, you know, when we got stopped, I remember one time like a cop stopped me and one of my cousins and uh, pulled us over 
And uh, they just randomly searched the car. And I think we were younger at the time. We didn't know any better that we can, like, deny them that. Uh, so they just let them search the car. And there was nothing in the car. You know, no drugs, no no weapons, nothing that was concerning or illegal or anything. So they just kind of searched the car and then they left us alone. It was just really weird and, like, uncalled for. Uh, but I've definitely heard experiences where people have had way worse experiences than that made by the rebranded neighborhood safety teams analyzing the report 97 percent were black or hispanic people and 24 percent of the stops were unconstitutional of 230 car stops included in the sample only two appear to have turned up weapons the report said study found especially troubling numbers in a handful of precincts and gotcha to be uh, i'd be a fair bit nervous myself not gonna lie yeah like i've i'm a very like straight laced person in the sense that like i've never committed a crime i've never even like gotten like a speeding ticket or nothing uh like that's how pretty straight laced i am when it comes to like crime um but like even so, like I've had negative experiences with police. Like I remember one time, uh, as a kid, uh, I think I was in like middle school or something and I had to call the police. It's a private family matter. So I want to get into the specifics, but I had to call the police for something. And, uh, it was like in the middle of the night. And I remember like talking to a female police officer and she was like, you need to go to sleep. And again, without getting into specifics, it was a pretty traumatic experience that I had gone through. So the ability to fall asleep after that was like non-existence. Uh, so long story short, they're like, yeah, you need to go to sleep. You know, you, it's a school night. You got to go to sleep. And, uh, I didn't get any sleep. So I didn't go to school the next day. Uh, and then the following day I went to school and that same fucking female police officer called me up to the office because I guess she had checked with the school to make sure that I went to school. And because I didn't go to school, they called me up to the office to like fucking grill me and shit. I'm like, what? Maybe, I don't know, 11, maybe 12 years old at the time. And I'm getting grilled for not going to school because I didn't get any sleep because of a traumatic incident that I had just witnessed. Like what the fuck? Like cops are cops are shitty. Okay. They're really fucking shitty. Including the 41st precinct in the Bronx where only where only 41% of the stops, 32% of frisks, and 26% of searches were constitutional, according to the report. I haven't heard any recently, but I remember a couple years ago uh, when stop and searches ending, uh, if someone innocent got shot and went viral a lot. Jeez, that's insane. Four, Eric Adams was boasting about the programs that he'd established at Rikers, and I said that that was not true, that Eric Adams had actually cut the $17 million for the budget used for the programs, the re-entry programs at Rikers. Rikers has been dysfunctional for generations. Mm -hmm. I came in, decreased violence, put in real incentive programs for young people there, but I didn't do it from a distance. I went to Rikers. The only time I was pulled up from a cop was during uh, the Christmas period because I had an old car. Uh, they gave me a hundred dollars as they did with all old car drivers. It was an event the mayor set up. That was awesome. I don't know what that was in connection to, but that's hey, at least you had a positive experience. That's pretty good, I guess. I will say there was one funny experience I had with a cop one time. Uh, this cop was actually like one of the rare, like chill experiences I've had with like a police officer. Uh, I went with my dad to go buy some pizza. And so we just went to the pizza place. We had a stack of pizzas and there was a cop behind us and they'd hit the lights on, like basically instructing us to pull over. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why am I getting pulled over or whatever? And so I obviously pull over and I look over my dad. My dad's not wearing his fucking seatbelt. Oh, my dad's not wearing his fucking seatbelt. So I'm like, God damn it, dad. So the cop walks up and they're like, do you know why I pulled you over? And my dad's just kind of like, yeah, I forgot to put my seatbelt on. And the cop like jokingly said, if you give me that a slice of that pizza, I'll let you go. And the cop was joking, but my dad's like, fuck it. Hey, here you go. Cracks open the box and starts to grab a slice. The cop's like, no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. You guys are pretty funny though. So I'm gonna let you go this time, but make sure to wear your seatbelt next time. So that's like one of the rare, like funny, positive experiences that I've had with law enforcement. That cop was pretty chill. But yeah, um, yeah, I've had so many bad experiences. I haven't had too many run-ins with cops, but the few that I've had, they've been pretty negative experiences. And so there's a reason why people, especially in the kind of communities that I grew up in, uh, aren't very trusting of law enforcement because there's a reason why, you know, they kind of, they can be pretty shitty, uh, sometimes. And walk the halls. I'm coming here. I'm going to see what you're Imagine if you had donuts. Well, this cop was a pretty skitty guy, so I don't know how many donuts he'd be consuming, but 
I get the meme. Cops, donuts, it's a pretty classic meme. Going through, I want to make sure you leave here better than how you got here in the first place. And we started instituting programs to do so. Well, Respectfully, Mayor jail. Adams, fundamentally, the things that you were saying <laughs> no. is untrue. You actually cut $17 million that were used for classes for people at Rikers, Rikers to re-enter society. Those were cut check under the, your... Check out, the, check out the programs. That, those were cut that under your... Cut. Those were cut. This is where he started ignoring... <laughs> that was the funniest shit. He was so intimidated by her, he didn't even want to look at her. But he tried to hype himself up like, look at all these great rehabilitative programs that I put in the prison system to try and rehabilitate people. And she's like, but, 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 that's not true. Listen to all these programs you cut. And when she started calling him on it, he wouldn't even look at her. He would not even look at her. How shameful. Under your administration. Fact check. Not only did Eric Adams cut the $17 million for re-entry service programs at Rikers, it accounted for less than 1% of the entire Department of Corrections $1.2 billion budget and around 0.001% wow. of the city's budget. But he chose to cut these vital and pretty cheap programs for no other reason than fuck the people at Rikers. Five, once I can- Damn, like I said, she's bringing the receipts, chat. She's but she's bodying him so hard. True. That Eric Adams had actually cut the budget for the program. As if the interview itself, as if the interview itself wasn't awesome enough. Okay. Seeing her not only like body him in that interview, but actually back up the statement she made with receipts. This is fucking awesome. Let's get some O sevens in the chat for Olay because this is like she just killed a man in front of all of us and we watched it. He had just been boasting about. He started throwing the programs under the bus all together and complaining that they weren't legitimate and that the people providing the programs for the people incarcerated at Rikers are not genuine and don't care about the people or otherwise they would be doing it for free. Respectfully, Mayor Adams, fundamentally, the things that you were saying is untrue. You actually cut $17 million that were used for classes for people at Rikers, Rikers to re enter society. Those were cut check under the, your. Check out, the, check out the programs. Those were cut under your. Cut. Those check were cut. He doesn't even want to look at her. He refused. I remember, and I, I believe I showed this during our last like reaction to the actual interview. Uh, I remember when I first like heard about this interview, I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw uh, a tweet from uh, what's his name from the Humanist Report, and he said something about like how uh, you know he was ignoring her, like trying so hard to pretend like she wasn't in the room, and it's so true. It's so fucking true. She shot the sher sheriff for defunding the deputy. Oh my God. Nice fucking meme. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Under your administration. We were spending millions of dollars. 31 people we have died at Rikers we spending, since Eric Adams we became mayor. Millions of dollars for these professional folks who do yo chat sister tippy just walked into the chat how you doing good to see you i'm gonna give you the vip role too let me go ahead and take care of that these programs re-entry programs millions of dollars seven people sitting inside the class people have profitized poverty they have that making so much money off of black and brown people if we're really true to what we say we want to do why do we have to pay you millions of dollars to do it mm. You know, why don't you come on Rikers like I do and volunteer? This isn't so much a fact check so much as I just wanted to highlight this insanity in case it had gotten by you. The mayor is making the argument that if people really care about black and brown people or people that are incarcerated, they will work for free. That they don't need wages now. Mind you, this is why Rikers itself gets $860 million yearly to lock up poor black and brown people pre-trial. So let's- Yikes. He actually said that with his whole chest and didn't expect to be called on it. Holy fuck. Yeah, that's a cringe take that mayor's ass. Yeah, true. Rewind a little bit. He cut the $17 million, just a tiny percentage of the money that he had. And he did that 
while he was crying broke about the migrant crisis. It's not that I have a problem with it. It's that, again, the sensationalism has a lot to do with the fact that you got up and declared that we have this migrant crisis. And I thought it was er interesting, your earlier point about the difference between how Ukrainian migrants are being received versus uh, migrants, black and Latino migrants. Because, again, you gave a town hall where you were the one who gave this speech and, and incent like you incentivized New Yorkers to feel this way. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. You call Not specific countries. See, that's what I wanted to see. All right. Obviously, like her, like, you know, citing news articles and stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's obviously good receipts there. But I wanted to see like proof of this guy saying this stuff with his own mouth. She brought the receipts, chat. Oh shit. oh, shit. I fucking hate everyone. That speech was insane. I can imagine. I remember not, you calling with countries sister, that the migrants no, were from. No, sister, they weren't no, the Ukrainian no, migrants. You weren't sister, talking about them. So, so sister, what happens when sister, we don't sister, have... Hold on, sister, sister, I did not call the countries what they were from. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. One time we were just in Venezuela. Now we're getting Ecuador. <laughs> now we're getting Russia speaking <laughs> coming to Mexico. Oh my God! It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. She got him! She fucking got him. Bro's looking in 359 directions. She isn't in. Yeah, he's like, he's literally like looking everywhere but at her. Like she could be right in front of him, like right here, right? And so he's looking over here. And as he's turning his head this way, instead of just like sweeping his head around, he's like, oh, he does not want to look at her. <laughs> She's so intimidating and it's awesome. In uh, Western Africa, a few moments later ecuador colombia it's the literal death note meme yeah true yeah mexico but also signing a historic deal. and he wait 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 hold on so not only did he do it at this speech he was giving here he did it in the fucking interview too so he it was another situation of him denying doing it and he did it in the fucking interview so now we're in uh, western africa a few moments later ecuador Colombia, Mexico, but also he contradicts himself so many times in the fucking interview. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. You can shut the fuck up, bitch. A historic deal with the Police Benevolent Association. It was the third deal. It was only the third voluntary contract with the Police Benevolent Association in 30 years in New York, where Eric Adams voluntarily agreed to increase the wages for lots of officers and to allow extra overtime for many officers. We're here to announce a new deal with the Police Benevolent Association that would do just that. This is a historic deal. Only the third voluntary contract with the PBA in 30 years. One that would make sure our officers get the benefits and compensation they deserve. Receipts. Allow them to work she a more flexible receipts. schedule. And mind you, NYPD blew past their $100 million budget. You know, I know like Breakfast Club doesn't do like React content, but I would so love I would so love to see the breakfast club react to this video on like one of their shows so they can literally see all the bullshit he lied about on their fucking show. That would be awesome. It'll probably never happen, uh, but that would be awesome for sure. We got to drop a like on this shit because God damn budget and overtime last year. When I brought up the deaths at Rikers, Eric Adams turned to Charlemagne to say that we need to look at how people are dying. That people are not dying because of what happens to them at Rikers, but that they're coming to Rikers. Oh, she got a raise for this? Well, she is uh, you know, a content creator, much like myself, and I know I don't have the biggest audience these days, but uh, if you haven't given her a sub yet, definitely do so. Because holy shit. Someone that's this good at providing the receipts for the statements that she makes only having 61,000 subs, that's that's a crime. That shouldn't be the case. It's ill. And people say, well, Eric, you know, people are, people are dying on Rikers. Look at how they die. People are coming into Rikers in terrible medical conditions. And it's not it's getting not that, their medical it's appointments. Not, it's, it's not that they would die. How did he think that that was a good point on his part? If somebody's going into Rikers and they're in bad medical condition and they're dying in Rikers because they're in bad medical condition, that to me just seems to indicate that you aren't providing the adequate resources so that they can get the treatment they need while they're there. How, 
how does he think that that's a good point for him? Hey, tipster, my three sons love watching your content with me, all teens and good, uh, with more mature language. Lol. Can you give them a shout out? Uh, it would make their day. I have no idea what their names are, but shout out to Austin sells, uh, sons. It's awesome to have you as a part of the audience. Good to see you. Hope you're enjoying the stream. And because, um, correction officers were killing them. People were coming in with heart problems, but under, heart problems. But, but they under, were overdosing on, on drugs. Fact check. Not only are people dying for a host of different reasons at Rikers, but the deaths due to medical reasons are still at the fault of the Department of Corrections because there were over 94,000 missed medical appointments because corrections officers simply failed to take people to their medical appointments. Yeah, see, that's like... That's not a point like in favor of you. That's a point against you. Just because these people are in prison or in jail, it doesn't mean they don't require medical treatment if they're having health issues. That's still the responsibility of the prison system to make sure they get the care and the need while they're in their care. Like, what the fuck? And those aren't even all the missed medical appointments. Yeah, funny, ha huh? He's literally gloating about people dying. What the fuck? That's the ones that can be directly attributed to the fault of DOC. Number seven, I said that last Thomas, Joshua and Nicholas. Well, hello, Thomas, Joshua and Nicholas. Uh, I'm glad you enjoy the streams here. We spent more than a hundred million dollars on police misconduct settlements for the NYPD and that that number has doubled since Eric Adams became mayor. Just last year, we paid out $150 million in settling police misconduct from right. NYPD. And, we, and that was double the wrong. number. That's double the number in police yeah, misconduct but, since you became mayor. I Fact check. Last year, New York has paid $121 million in police misconduct settlements, which was- Again, she has the receipts to back up everything she said. Every single statement, every single claim she made, everything she pressed him on. She brings the receipts to back up all of it. This is impressive up from just $85 million in 2021. And that doesn't account for all of the money that New York has paid in police settlements. All told, the city paid nearly $184 million, primarily for personal injuries as well as property damage, according to the comptroller. Eight, I said to Eric Adams that I remembered his trip to DC to go see Biden about the migrant crisis because I remember the trip being stopped because the FBI seized his phone. I, I remember you started that tour before you were going to go to go DC yeah. and you, uh, when you were going to go to DC to, buy, to talk to Joe Biden about the migrant crisis, but you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. Good Lord, you just make up stuff. <laughs> Did I make that up? That's, yes. that, that's reports. So, oh my God, he didn't like that being brought up at all. The FBI Sister. didn't seize your phone. I did, I did find that interesting that he didn't like that being brought up at all. They didn't get to elaborate on that too much. The topic got shifted pretty quickly, but I'm hoping that she elaborates on this more because that would be interesting. Sister. The FBI didn't seize your phones. No. But they didn't you, investigate no, your top you just, aides. That's what, not happening. What did you just say? Mm -hmm. you ju you just I said, say, I remember the tour stayed. that you went you, on you, when you were going to the border, when you were going to come back. I came back because somebody President had to Biden take my phone because it stopped i said i remember on the day of i remember it because it was well, you reported. got a bad you got amnesia oh me and the news it. fact check and i don't think this clarification is oh actually. yeah that's right he he tried to claim it didn't happen she had amnesia or some shit want to make it better for eric adams but his phones were definitely seized in connection with the fbi investigation that was happening then and his trip was definitely cut short but it wasn't cut short for the fbi seizing his phone it was cut short for the FBI searching and raiding his fundraisers' homes. The FBI actually raided. <laughs> so, so it's even worse than what she said before. Oh shit! Oh, oh my God. <laughs> he should have just went with it, like with the whole phone thing. Like it looked bad enough as it is, but like he should have just went with it because, like, the fact that she had to elaborate on it even more—it's worse. It's worse than what she said on the show. She's 360 dunking on the guy. True. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. You know what I need to add to the soundboard? You know what I need to add to the soundboard? Let me see if I could find this shit real quick because it's too good to not play it right here. Oh my God. Yes, this, this, this. I need to add this to the soundboard chat. Where's that? No, no, no. Skip to the actual part. Oh, oh my. It's, it's all ju ju just an act. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. <laughs> we need to add that to the soundboard so bad. 
Oh my god, somebody remind me because I'll totally forget. Several of Eric Adams' top aides at this point in connection with their investigation against him for illegal campaign donations, which he was forced to admit even in that interview despite his outrage and my audacity to ask him about his federal investigation. But you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. Good Lord, you just make up stuff. Did I make that up? Did they search your top aides? Did they search the home of several several people? Okay, Yes. that's what I said. And bonus fact. Those oh, wait, wait, wait. So she did kind of mention that. She didn't elaborate on it, like, to a great extent during the actual interview, but she did mention it. ...of Eric Adams' top aides at this point in connection with their investigation against him for illegal campaign donations, which he was forced to admit even in that interview despite his outrage and my audacity <clears throat> to ask him about his federal investigation. But you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. <clears throat> Good Lord, you just make up stuff. Did I make that up? Did yes. they search your top aides? Not that day. Did they search the home of several, several yes. people? Okay. Yes. That's what I said. And bonus fact, those are not the only- Another contender for the soundboard? Oh no, what's this? What is this? Let me see. It's false. No way. Not this time. We created it. <laughs> not this time. No. Not this time. It's totally made up. Pure fiction. I used to watch that show so much when I was younger. What was it? Beyond Belief Factor Fiction, right? I used to watch that show so much. I loved it. It was it was great. Although there were a couple of things that they claimed were true where I'm just like, how could that be true? Like, I can't remember like a specific example, but just like to give you a, a little bit of an example of what I'm talking about. There was like a story where like at the end of the story, the guy was dead. Okay. And they said it was true. So it's like, how do you get the story of a dead guy? And it's true. Like, I'm, how? Like, I don't know. So I, I doubt the validity of some of the stories that they told on that show. But even so, uh, like, I used to love that show so much. Anyway, getting kind of sidetracked. But that is a good candidate for sure. Only allegations that Eric Adams is dealing with. He was also recently sued. But I feel like you could also accomplish the same thing with this guy right here. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. By a former colleague at the NYPD, a black woman who sued the Adult Survivors Act. She alleges that while she and Eric- Oh, I remember, um, you, you guys may remember I mentioned earlier that like I've been getting a lot of her uh, content recommended to me ever since watching the interview on Eric Adams. And I saw her, like, I didn't watch the short, but I got recommended a short from her. Let's see if I could find it. Uh, I got recommended a short from her where she was talking about this guy allegedly like sexually harassed or sexually assaulted someone. Um, Eric Adams, sexual. I'll just say search sexual. Let's see if it comes up. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of news coverage of it, but. Okay, I'm not finding her short, but yeah, it showed up in my recommended the other day, and I'm like, wow, this guy's like a real piece of work. He's being accused of like sexual assault as well. Holy shit. We're both working for the NYPD. She had been passed up for a job promotion multiple times, she believed, on the basis of her race and gender. So she turned to Eric Adams, who at the time led an organization that was meant to help black people within the NYPD dealing with discrimination. So she turned to Eric Adams for help. And she alleges that he agreed to help her and told her that they would have a meeting at Coney Island after work one day, but instead of driving them to Coney Island, that he drove to a parking lot and tried to get her to have oral sex with him. And that when she didn't, he relieved himself in her presence. Yeah, that's a pretty big yikes for sure. Now it's important. One thing I always, you know, clarify with my audience It's important to understand that these are allegations. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if there's some legitimacy to that, uh, that's not good. What the fuck? Ugh. Brother, ugh. <laughs> when Eric Adams brought up how the media sensationalizes crime, I said that it's NYPD using their own Twitter accounts to sensationalize crime. Those random acts of violence are being highlighted. If you have if you have 24 hours in a day and something that happens to you in an hour in a day, you start to define yourself as that entire day. Those random acts of violence are plastered on social media. They're plastered on, on the NYPD uh, newspapers. Twitter page. They, they're plastered on everything. People be Yo, that, that reminds me. You remember uh, when the, we did the reaction to the video? Towards the end, I reacted to some tweets, or we took a look at some tweets. The NYPD Twitter account was literally using their actual Twitter account to engage in targeted harassment against Olay. 
We're talking about an official Twitter account for a law enforcement agency literally using their Twitter account to engage in targeted harassment against her. Like, it's, oh my God. Like, they, not just Eric Adams, but like so many times her point was proven throughout the course of this whole ordeal. Begin to believe that, oh, I'm living in a city that's out of control. We are not. She made a good point, that's though. If New York, if NYPD is is reposting that kind of stuff, what are we supposed to think? I said, no, 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 no. I said at the beginning. Everybody, everybody got a phone, brother. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> NYPD's page is doing this. This has recently been there so much so that they're arguing with journalists on there. I hope that she brings that up because we talked about it on the stream, obviously. But uh, I hope that she brings that up that they targeted her on the official Twitter account. NYPD <clears throat> on their own Twitter pages that are posting and sensationalizing crime. And I said this at the beginning. And for the fact check, you could honestly just go to any NYPD account on Twitter and see for yourselves or read this entire article from Hellgate devoted to how NYPD uses their Twitter to sensationalize crime as well as harass journalists. But honestly, forget all of that because I have nothing better than what's happening right now. I think it's very funny that I said in this interview that NYPD uses their Twitter this way. Eric Adams denied it only for his chief of patrol to get on- She showed it! <laughs> Oh shit. oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Twitter and start fucking harassing me. They even did the internet troll thing. You know the internet troll thing where like some Get internet troll. Twitter look at this. Look at this real quick. Harassing me. They did the internet troll thing where like you know how sometimes like an internet troll will poke and poke and poke and poke and poke on you on Twitter until you finally say fuck it, I've had enough, and you block them. And then they post the screenshot of the black to further engage in targeted harassment. They did this. This is okay. This isn't an internet troll. This is an actual official law enforcement Twitter account page engaging in this kind of behavior. Oh shit! Oh, what shit. the fuck? Okay, 10. I said that Eric Adams won. I hate when people do that. It's actually stupid. And I gotta be honest, like in the past, like I've done that before and I kind of like look back on it and it's like, yeah, that was kind of cringe. It's one thing if you post like the screenshot because you had like a funny engagement with someone and they block you because they can't like handle criticism or something like that. But like, I've done that before myself in the past too. I have to own it. And yeah, it's really fucking stupid. But like you don't, again, like it's one thing with like a normal like, Twitter user or like some troll on the internet pulls that shit. But like, this is an official law enforcement account. Yikes. Wants to sensationalize one police murder, which is a rare occurrence, while he has nothing to say of the at least 31 people that have died at Rikers since he became mayor. The at least. I post the screenshots of being blocked by larger accounts too. Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's like I said, if it's like an average Twitter user, you kind of come to expect that sort of thing, but you don't expect like public officials to be engaging in this kind of behavior. Like, that's really fucking cringe. Seven people that have been killed by New York police this year, including a 19 year old <clears throat> that had been murdered by NYPD in Queens just a night before our interview after he called 911 for help when he was in a mental health crisis. Same breath that you want to. How the fuck does that happen? How do you call the police for help and you end up dead after calling them for. Oh my God. That is insane. Want to sensationalize me? Want to highlight and point out? Oh, an officer was killed the other day, which is a rare occurrence across the United States, but let alone in New York. New York police officers have killed at least seven people this year, including. Well, instance, we did cringe stuff like this, and yeah, uh, we've grown, we've evolved. Uh, we do other cringe stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah, we. Do, you know, you you when you grow as a person, you know, you, you you don't necessarily grow in a less cringy manner. You just change the cringy things that you do, and I think that's fair. 19-year-old, an NYPD officer killed a 19-year-old in Queens dismiss, yesterday. I'm not going to dismiss the loss of a life of an innocent person that wears a uniform to protect us. But you us. do, of the a 31 rare, people dead at Rikers, rare, a rare, a rare and the 19-year-old. Oh, and then, like, the media misrepresented this as her, like, shitting on a police officer who lost their life, which is not fucking true. She's just pointing out that, like, here's all the other people's lives that have been lost that you, like, pretend, like, don't exist, or you completely, like, invalidate what happened to them, that sort of thing. But yeah, the media, like uh, a bunch of right wing media outlets, including like Fox, for example, like completely misrepresented her statements here. Killed yesterday. I, 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 I feel they like tried to make it seem like she was shitting on the death of an innocent police officer or something like that. 
I don't want <clears throat> to take you out of context, and I don't want people to all of a sudden criticize that you're being dismissive of a Ma- young Adams, man being shot Mayor and Adams, killed. that's not going to work on Listen, me. I'm not trying to work anything yeah. on you. I'm just, I, we, I lost a member of the police department the same way I go to see the mother of an 11-year-old baby that was, 11-month-old baby that was shot in the head when I first became man. and I sat in the hospital with her. The same way I go visit these mothers who lose their children to gun violence. I don't want to take you out of context, uh, he says on her show. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He says that. And then, like, she proceeds to get taken out of context. I go see them. Yes, but just not the I, mothers just of the people I, who are dying just, in Rikers. Just as I go, just as I go to see a, a the, the, the family member of a slain police officer, I go visit those parents that lose. It. She's like a female Giga Chad. True. <laughs> Isn't there already a term for that? Isn't that what they would call a Giga Stacy? Or am I remembering that wrong? Anyway. Did you visit, are you, now, you visiting you the that? family? Of do the, you do that? First of all, yesterday I that? held a Riker. You, you, I, I represented you hundreds. Went to visit, you went to visit all, an, uh, the family member of a slain officer? No, not the slain officer. Okay, of course you No, didn't. but what about the 19-year-old mm-hmm. that was killed yesterday by mm-hmm. NYPD in Queens when he <clears> called for help? Have you said anything <clears> about that? <throat> are you visiting them? Yeah, the... the, the mm. Fact check. Very few officers die in the line of duty. In 2021, there was a 25-year record high of police deaths in the line of duty. And do you know what that number was? 73. Now, compare that to the 779 people police have already killed just this year, or the at least- Jeez, and we're only like, what? We're into month four, just the start of month four. And that's how many people have already been killed by law enforcement? Jeez. 1,247 people killed by police last year in 2023. Further, And you have to wonder, like, how many of those, like, could have been avoided. Obviously, there are some circumstances where, you know, somebody gets killed by law enforcement and it may be, like, justified because those people are, like, a threat to other people's lives, etc. There are circumstances where, yeah, it, you know, there was no other possible outcome. But, like, you, you have to wonder how many of those deaths could have been avoided. At least 31 people have died in Rikers since Eric Adams became mayor. And I say at least because after getting tired of the backlash from the mounting deaths at Rikers, his administration decided that they would stop telling the public about in-custody deaths altogether. The city reported... The change in the DOC's death disclosures comes as the federal monitor overseeing the department. So, so many people are dying that they're like, yeah, we're not going to disclose the deaths anymore. Oh, my. Jeez. Department ...has criticized Correction Commissioner Louis Molina, where Eric Adams hired... Literally, city jails no longer announcing deaths behind bars, angering watchdogs. Oh, my God. ...and his team for failing to properly inform... That literally looks like a fucking cover-up. Oh, God. ...from them about a recent death and four other serious and disturbing incidents involving harm to incarcerated persons. In a special report, federal monitor Steve Martin wrote he had to rely on media reports, including one from the city about a detainee who had been placed on a ventilator for two weeks <clears throat> and is now paralyzed from the neck down after being tackled by guards. I said wow. that at least seven people have been killed by New York police this year. You can go to a website called Mapping Police Violence that I encourage you to utilize where they track police killings all across the country. 11. I told Eric Adams that I was aware that he visited Rikers because back in 2022, after a string of deaths, he went to Rikers to lend his support to the corrections officers. I've been on Rikers Island more than any mayor in the history of the city talking with inmates and correction officers to turn around what's happening on Rikers Island. I know you Island. go to Rikers in 2022 when there were three deaths back to back because corrections officers left their posts and allowed it to happen. You went to Rikers to express your support for the corrections officer. I know you go to Rikers. Oh, but I do God. want you to do you know Mayor that, Adams. That, but you you keep you keep giving out misinformation. It's not this fact check. New York One reported that in 2022, after two detainees died in custody in a 48-hour period following the death of another incarcerated man earlier that month, Eric Adams held his first press conference at Rikers to lend his support to the corrections officers, where he said, "Quote: I am not ashamed of you. I am proud of you. Keep doing the job you are doing." What? What the fuck? Oh my god. Yeah, this this guy's horrible. This guy, no wonder he wants to make everything she says seem like misinformation. What the fuck? Beyond the fact checks that I'm presenting to you, I said, you have nothing to say about the 31 deaths. You have nothing to say about the seven deaths. Nothing to say about the 31 Rikers deaths. You have nothing to say about NYPD murdering that 19-year-old boy. And you know what he said about it? Nothing. 
So that's your fact check on how much he cares <laughs> about anybody that's not the police. I think that should be a sufficient amount of receipts that I've provided to y'all. If you are still interested, trust me, that's not the tip of the iceberg on all the things that Eric Adams has done wrong in his administration or what's going on. Again, my magnum opus, my Eric Adams doc. So if you haven't seen it and you want to know more about Eric Adams administration and why I have the problem with him that I have, you should watch that. Thank you Jeez. so much for watching this. I hope you stick around, you like, you subscribe, and I hope you check out the other videos. I've got some great stuff on here. All right. So that was an amazing video. Shout out to Olay. Let's get some 07s in the chat. If you guys want to check out this video for yourself in your free time, I'll post a link in the chat. And when we upload this to YouTube, I'll try to remember to post a link in the description. Leave a like on it. Leave a comment. Let her know uh, that the tipster sent you. And I do often check to see if you guys actually did leave those comments. So I'll be on the lookout for that. And then also, uh, I haven't watched this myself, uh, but she did mention, you know, this documentary that she did on Eric Adams. So if you want to know more, I'll go ahead and I'll link that in the chat as well. And I'll try to remember to put it in the description uh, as well uh, for those of you guys watching on YouTube. Uh, but uh, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. If we didn't think he got destroyed enough during the course of that interview, she definitely fucking annihilated him even more uh, when she did that fact check video, which was awesome. Again, shout out to Olay uh, and thank you for reaching out. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, our commentary from our previous uh, stream. But uh, holy shit, that, that was amazing. Hipster, a good dude, hipster, hipster.